Hello everyone, this is Ari Moshe. I'm creating this video to offer some support and grounding as we prepare for the upcoming solar eclipse. This video is good for this eclipse and in general, this is some good advice for preparing for any eclipse. Um, full solar eclipses aren't totally uncommon. In this particular case, it is uncommon for a full solar eclipse to span the entire width of really any country. So we have the United States, the entire place is being hit by this eclipse. Eclipses are really powerful experiences. I like to think of them as ceremonies. And the thing about a ceremony is it's a space designated for energy to come in, energy to come out. Whether or not we're conscious of it, whether or not we're participating consciously with the flow of the cosmos, the cosmos are flowing without and within. So when the eclipse happens, it's potentially a very powerfully healing time. We don't necessarily have to do anything about it. Life has its own rhythm. But I feel that in being conscious of these greater astrological events, we can co-participate with these cycles and really work with the energies in a conscious way, in a way that actually supports our growth. Eclipses in particular are potent. What's actually happening, the nodal axis of the moon is aligning with the new moon. And what that translates to is sun, moon, earth, exact alignment, boom, boom, boom. And for a moment, there's this experience of the sun being completely blacked out. And energetically, and I've experienced this energetically in my own body, in my own psyche, many times when I've participated or been around during full solar eclipses, there's an experience of everything stopping. And even if you look around, there's a palpable sense of emptiness that is apparent in the moment of an eclipse. This energy of emptiness is almost like an emptying out. Everything is open. And in this openness, on one level of thinking of it, all kinds of things can leave, all kinds of things can come in. The ancients really revered eclipses. Eclipses were always recognized as powerful times, don't mess with them, stay at home kind of thing. Um, I don't like to take that approach really towards anything because I don't recognize anything as good or bad, but how we relate to it is really what makes all the difference very, very often. So in this void, in this emptiness, where are we? Where do we find ourselves? And if we honor the immense spiritual and healing potential of an eclipse, it's a time where we can actually ground ourselves more in love. We can ground ourselves in emptiness to receive and reconnect with our truest intention. It's nice to keep it simple, not to complicate any ceremony with lots of complex thinking and ideas because most of the time when we come from that place, it's actually more thought and less heart. So to keep it simple and simply open up for the highest, open up to continue this path that we're on and receive the healing, let go what we don't need and become further affirmed and grounded in our light, in our truth. It's very common, and this is also an historically counted you know, phenomenon I've experienced this, I see this all the time in my work. During eclipses, there's a lot of frantic energy and it's exactly because there's so much openness. And if we're not grounding ourselves in the center, it's very easy to be swayed in all kinds of directions and there are all kinds of things that can happen during these times. You know, it's, it's akin to taking a high dose of psychedelic medicine and just if you're going to do that, honor the medicine, honor the ceremony space, honor the healing that can happen in this space. And I always find the deepest teaching in life, whether it's participating with an astrological event, seeing a healer, working with medicine, the deeper teaching, the deeper um, wisdom 
is the medicines inside and the medicine is in how we bring ourselves to the event, how we bring ourselves to the experience, how we bring ourselves to the yoga practice, to the medicine. Nothing itself will heal us inherently. It's our bringing ourselves in elevation to meet it that creates this beautiful co-creative alchemy where healing happens. I'm always finding this on every level of understanding. So we go and see the guru, we go and see this amazing healing event. But we do it, oh, little dragonfly. We do it with reverence, knowing that it's not just happening to us. The part that we are in control of, the essence of our own evolutionary journey is in our intention, our desire, how we consciously cultivate our intentions in life. Now, I can speak for myself. I've been posting um, and speaking a lot about what's happening in the United States and it's really, really triggering me. And I am genuinely concerned. These things are real and I feel it's important to speak and call out the darkness by its name and not let the absurdity and all the things that are happening right now just to kind of go by and not say anything, especially not to ignore it under the guise of being loving and positive. To me, it's important to address these things, but what's really important and what I wish to communicate, we must take responsibility to be grounded in our own might. To look at ourselves, are we singing? Are we dancing? Are we freely sharing our love with others? Are we anchoring ourselves in this world in a way where kindness and giving and sharing and opening ourselves is the bottom line? Because if we are, we're doing a good job. That's the point. If we let all the concerns of the world, social, collective, personal, and it can be difficult, it's a difficult time, if we let it actually take us out of our alignment, then we're missing the deeper, deeper point of this human existence. So a lot of people are going to some big gatherings. I'm going to be here at this beautiful, there's, I don't know if you can see it, yeah, hot springs um, here in Idaho this weekend. To everyone that's going somewhere or not going somewhere, I really want to offer the empowerment and the reflection. Hold reverence. Honor the immensity and the power of this event. So often in this day and age, we actually don't honor the power of these astrological and astronomical, which are the same, by the way, cycles. We leave it to some people that will write a bunch of blogs and offer their perspective. But to connect directly, intuitively in your body to what's actually happening and we can feel it. Whatever's occurring right now in your life, this is the ceremony. We're in flow of it. So to hold this with reverence and gratitude, whether you're at home or you're going to a big gathering. And um, my one of my teachers, Glenda Green, who wrote some really beautiful books, she sent out an email recently and I, I love what she said. She said something to the nature of, if you are to feel any emotion, feel love. And if you notice, all of life around us gets quiet and empty, so we can become quiet and empty. There's something so special and beautiful about letting ourselves empty, letting ourselves drop. So I bless you and I share my love and may this be just a healing time overall. What we are not needing in this emptiness, may it leave us. Let's hold ourselves in that place of openness to the possibility of some greater healings and look inside. What are the healings? What are the things that you're really wanting to claim right now? This eclipse with all this Leo energy, Uranus retrograde, trying to get ruled by Mars on the North Node in Leo, it's all about coming out more fully in our individual self-expression. Being courageous to express our love, to express our heart more freely, more openly. So we can ground ourselves in whatever that is for you, however that's looking for you. We don't have to have too much thought, it's heart. All right.